Hey guys, welcome back to Bucket of Cars. Um, I'll be honest with you, we've already done this intro once, but we lost it, so this is my second attempt. Uh, and the video is actually already done. So I already know the outcome. So um, if you notice that uh, the weather's a bit different when the video comes back in after the intro, uh, and I've got two days stubble, that's why. Um, but uh, we've got a, we'll call it a will it run? It kind of already ran, but we'll call it a will it run on a vehicle uh, that uh, most of you guys can relate to. Um, definitely one of the first small compacts back in its day, um, and definitely a great first car for many people. But uh, without any further ado, let's just take a look at it right here. All right, guys, so I picked up this car for free. Yes, free. Um, not all things uh, best in life is free, let me tell you. But we're gonna give it a shot with this car. Uh, it isn't really a will it run because I was told it runs. Um, so I, I, I just don't know what's wrong with it. They said that it skipped a timing, uh, uh, timing belt, a uh, tooth on the timing belt. Whether that's the case or not, I really don't know. But if it does run, uh, it probably isn't running really good. Um, but we're gonna dive into this. But before we do, let's do what we always do. We're gonna do a little bit of a walk around, uh, take a look at it. Um, little blast of the past of 1989. So here we go. So here's the car here. Uh, overall, it's in okay shape. It's been sitting for a while. It's got some of them good old moss growing on the front. Tires are holding air. They're kind of cinched down. Tread seems to be okay. Again, you won't be able to see. I don't know why I even try, but the rotors are rusted over there. Um, yeah, it's not too bad though. It's got drum brakes on the rear. Tires are toast. Where uh, the wear mark is completely gone there. But uh, no major dents on this side. It looks to be okay. Um, oh, there's another coffee cup there. Seems to be. Uh, these, these vehicles were really good uh, for fuel economy. Little, little textured patina here, but it almost looks like someone tried to try to fix that. I don't know. It's, uh, it's like Braille. Yeah, rust was here. Okay, there it is. Um, so anyways, uh, looks to be worth saving uh, if the, well, who knows? Maybe it's going to be something quick and cheap and easy, but... Uh, We'll see what uh, what we're gonna get into here. Um, start with the interior, as usual. Find out if there's any goodies. My guys, uh, we did charge up the uh, battery. It was dead. Oh yeah, it's got the Armstrong windows that were left open. We've got some moisture in here, so we'll close that up. Got some a little bit of moisture. Uh, standard manual transmission. Nice. Uh, chair looks like it's or the seat looks like it's wet. Yeah, for the most part, it's pretty clean in here, guys. I don't know what's on the other side there. A little bit of crumbs or something, but... Uh, got the sagging headliner. Uh, I don't know, the back seat. Does it flip forward here? Let's take a look. There we go. Nice and clean back here. It just needs a little bit of a vacuuming. I don't know what's in the trunk or if the trunk uh, opens from the outside, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's get in here. Hopefully I don't get too wet. Came with the key. Look at this, radio delete. That is for the extra 10 horsepower that that adds from the uh, radio just sucking all the energy from the engine. Um, so that's cool, so this is gonna be good for someone that wants to sing to themselves. Um, oh, what's that down there? Let's say it's a... It's an I don't know switch, but I'm wondering if it's a kill switch uh, to stop the uh, the starter or something like that. Because when you're sitting here and you look over, you can barely see it. But if someone was trying to steal the car, I guess they wouldn't see it. Uh, what's in here? Good. Great, that makes it um, How many kilometers here? Yeah, that's right. I said great kilometers. We are up in Canada. 205. It's got quarter tank. Uh, engine's cold, that's because it's not running. 
Um, we've got the keys here. We'll give it a we'll give we'll try starting it, but uh, we'll just set them there. There you go. Just stay there, little buddy. Uh, we'll try it in a little bit here. Um, let's take a look at the back hatch first, and uh, we'll take a look at the under the hood as well. So here's the back hatch. Uh, does it open with the key? I guess it opens with the key. So let's just go get the key. Uh, it's on the other side, of course. Here we go. Yeah, I don't know if any goodies are gonna be back here. Oh, it's not really. There we go, kind of stiff. Is it gonna stay up? Nope. It's gonna just drop on my head, so I'll use my head to, ow, hold it up. And what's under here? Anyone's guess is as good as mine. Any, anything cool? Not really, got the jack, got a spare tire. No rust, super clean car actually. This will clean up really nicely. So hopefully, hopefully there's nothing majorly wrong with it and it's worth, uh, it's worth saving. Okay, let's close it. Bam, close that. Let's not forget the keys. I'm really bad with putting them down somewhere, so there you go, bud. Hang tight. Hood's already popped because we did uh, charge the battery just to save some time so that I could just start recording this. Let's see if we can get this open. And use my head again. Where's the prop rod right there? Oh, come on. And down you go. Okay, so this is the, uh, I think it's the one liter. Yep. So the information uh, for most everything right there and right there. Uh, it's the one liter uh, engine. I believe it's made by Suzuki. Uh, they're decent little engines. Uh, I don't know too much uh, to go wrong with them. Too. Uh, I actually don't know these vehicles. Now, um, the person says it runs. Uh, it had a dead battery when we picked it up, but they did say, and they warned us, that the coolant was um, drained from this. Uh, why? Don't know. But it was drained, so uh, I believe... Did we even fill it up? Did, maybe the guys did. I don't know. Nope. It's bone dry in there. So still bone dry. Uh, let's check. It kind of kind of has me curious, like wondering, why would you drain the coolant? He said so that the block didn't freeze. Well, coolant doesn't freeze. So kind of had me scratching my head. But you know what? You don't ask very many questions when it's a free car because it's free. Uh, oil is over here. I'm take a peek of that. There you go. Nice and oily. Can you even see that? Am I too close to you? Uh, it doesn't look like anything too uh, special. Just regular used oil. Back in you go. It looks like it looks like there was some uh, squirrels or whatnot maybe living in here. Hopefully no rat nest was made anywhere or any wires chewed. No condensation on the bottom of the cap, so that's good. So so far the oil's checking out to be okay. I guess the only other thing that we can check uh, under the hood just to see if uh, there's any major issues is if like maybe a mouse or a rat made its way up into the air cleaner to uh, make a home. Is this even going to come off? Yeah, it's going to come off. There we go. I don't know how this... It's got all these goofy little clips. Okay, take that off, take that off. Take that off, and take that off. You guys might hear my phone in the background beeping. I gotta, I'm expecting a call. That's an interesting little air cleaner. All right, nothing too, uh, whoops, nothing too dirty or crazy. No real surprises, a little carbon buildup in there, but uh, nothing too, nothing too concerning. So we'll put that back, we'll put this back. So, so far, Put this on. Sorry, I, I keep moving the camera, guys. Um, so far, there's nothing that's screaming anything major, but there's still, I mean, <laughs> the lack of coolant, I feel like maybe, uh, maybe it was having a coolant issue, and the reason it got drained was because it was losing coolant all the time, and because it was losing coolant all, all the time, uh, that's why the coolant got delete, deleted, or not deleted, diluted. Sorry, a bird just dived at me. That was crazy. Probably only heard that on the camera. Uh, and if the coolant got uh, diluted, then uh, it could cause for freezing. Um, 
but uh, that'd be the only uh, concern. Battery's hooked up. We got this thing, uh, I don't know, charged up, supposedly, whether this thing holds a charge or not. Let's uh, hop in. I'm gonna get my butt wet again on this door. It's starting to rain too, so hopefully the camera's staying dry. Let's see if, uh, let's see if she starts. She's in neutral, beeping away. All right, she fired right up, but holy, she's shaking. So what does this do? I don't know what that does. Oh, oh, that's the blower motor. You can't hear it because of the engine. But there's a, <laughs> so obviously this doesn't work. And that turns on the blower motor. So there's that. Um, let's go look at the engine while this thing's running. She's shaking pretty good. She sure doesn't sound good either. There's the engine just shaking away. Something's wrong. It really isn't doing justice on the video. Whoops, it's shaking, shaking good. Crazy. You guys may not be able to hear me. Water pump sounds like it's just absolutely toast. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to step back so it's not as loud. Now, there's no coolant in it, uh, so i got to be quick here. I don't want to let it overheat. What I'm going to do is, the quicker, the best thing to find out right now is if we've got even a good engine, is we're just going to pull one spark plug at a time. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we have a bad engine. It might mean that we don't have spark going to uh, one section. And I don't mean spark plug, I mean the wire. We're just going to see if there's a noticeable difference when we pull the wire uh, with the engine shaking or not. So let's do that first. Okay, so, got the wire here. Yep, you hear that? You hear it runs a lot different? And then it revs right up once you put it back on. So that's fine. Same thing with this one, it's running all weird. Okay, so we got two good ones. Nothing. Nothing. So, <laughs> as you can see, uh, I pulled each spark plug and uh, the first two, the engine ran noticeably different. The third one, uh, it didn't change anything. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we just have a, a, an issue with spark. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, first check for spark going to the spark plug, uh, spark plug itself at the wire. If we have spark there, we're gonna pull the spark plug uh, and we're gonna check for spark there. Um, and I'll probably be putting it up in the top corners when I do that with cranking it over, just like I usually do. Okay, you're gonna hear some beeping, guys, but what I did was uh, I just put my uh, spark tester here. Uh, you're gonna be able to see it when I crank uh, from the inside, so I'm probably not gonna put anything on the top. Uh, I just put this to the negative to ground it out because I'm only clamped onto a plastic thing there, but that should spark. Uh, the engine will run. I did pull the spark plug already um, just to test that next, but it should run on, well, even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're just checking for spark here. So, I don't know, can you guys see it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I'll just see if it... I'll hold you there. Can you even see it? Okay, it's running. Let's get out there and check quickly. Oh, yeah. We got good spark. Let's turn that off. Sounds like a... Sewing machine. Here we go. Okay, so that's got good spark. So now, we're gonna jet get the, uh, if we can do it all with one hand. Try this again. We're gonna take this off. Don't need this anymore. Uh, where's the spark plug? There it is, put it on the ground. Not really the best place for it. Got the, whoops, that's not it. Got the spark plug. We're gonna put it on here. And now we're gonna check for spark. I think what we're gonna do, there we go. Is we're gonna just clamp onto it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I should be able to. I should be able to. Sorry, looking at what I'm doing, not, not what you're seeing. So here's hoping that that thing will stay. We'll turn it on again. And uh, we'll see if that spark plug has spark. Now if the spark plug has spark, then that means we've got a dead cylinder. For sure. 
Okay, she's running on two cylinders. Okay, so let me get where it's dry. But as you guys can see on the video, um, it was sparking pretty good. Uh, sorry, it's just raining right now, guys. This one backing under this cover. So I think what I'm gonna do, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film up close. I might set up a camera right here while I take off the engine uh, or the top end of the engine. I don't even know how close I am. Am I really close to you guys? Sorry. Uh, while I take off the top of the engine uh, on there, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the top end off. We're gonna see if we can see where the head gasket might be blown out. I've already priced it out. Locally, uh, top end kit is like 200 bucks Canadian. Uh, so $5.63 uh, American. And uh, on the internet, on, I think, what was it, Rock Auto. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just saying where I'm getting it from. Uh, I can get the head gasket set, uh, top end kit actually, all gaskets, and a water pump shipped to my door in two days for still less than the $200 uh, Canadian. So, uh, so that's probably the route that we're going to go. Uh, if I paid anything for this car, I don't think I would be trying this. Uh, but because it was free, scrap is so low that if I throw the head gasket in it, even if I still have to scrap the vehicle, I'll probably like break even. Um, but if I end up fixing it, uh, it's definitely going to be worth a hell of a lot more. Furthermore, even if I don't fix it, as I'm running uh, something that needs work, um, known to need possibly an engine, it's still probably going to be worth 500 bucks to someone. So I'm willing to take that risk to throw in the top engine uh, gasket kit, kit and, uh, and a water pump and see if that fixes it. But uh, I guess um, that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, I'm going to be working on the car over there. I just grabbed a handful of tools that I'm going to bring over there. I brought an impact gun over there already with me. Uh, I picked up a, a flat, well, yep, flathead, Phillips, and a small pry bar. Uh, I picked up uh, some wrenches. Uh, I believe it's 12 millimeter all the way up to 15. I don't think I'm going to need anything more than that. Picked up some uh, lubricant to try and bust uh, the exhaust manifold bolts. Uh, have them soaking while I'm doing some other stuff. A bunch of uh, sockets, sm oops, sockets, small crescent wrench, um, an extension, and uh, we're gonna see how long it's gonna take to pull the top end off of this engine. I don't think it's gonna take too, too long, but uh, I haven't pulled the top end off of one of these cars, so your guess is as good as mine. Hopefully I don't run into any, into any issues. Uh, without any further ado, uh, we're gonna dive into this. Please take this moment, while we're under time lapse, like and subscribe. Uh, probably not teaching you guys much of anything maybe i'm just making you guys laugh uh at some idiot trying to throw money at uh some random vehicle but you know what if that's all that it is then there you go you can like my videos and you can see future ones of uh of me doing that thanks guys Metro. So, uh, where are we at? Yeah, uh, I could probably faded the screen off with me working on the car. Um, I've got the head off. Uh, of course I did. Um, got some surprises in there. We're gonna just uh, let you uh, uh, get filled in and caught up on some of these surprises. But um, yeah, I just didn't have. Uh, I wasn't able to have the camera really working up close and and kind of showing what I was doing. Uh, just simply because the weather wasn't really working with me. Um, but let me, uh, let's just pop the hood here. Hopefully it'll pop. There we go. I'll just hold it. So there you go. We've got the, uh, the head off. 
Um, everything come, came apart nicely. This was the cylinder. I probably shouldn't go so close. This is the cylinder that was in question um, with no compression. Uh, it looks really good shape. Like there's no scoring on the cylinder wall. Uh, there's not even a lip here. Super smooth, super nice. Uh, no damage to the top of the piston. All the pistons look like they're in relatively the same shape. This one has a little bit of crud but probably because it's, it hasn't been firing for who knows how long, so we can probably clean that up a little bit. But uh, came apart fairly nicely. I'm gonna have to clean up uh, the head gasket quite a bit there, um, scrape it nice and clean. Uh, what I did was I marked the belt and the pulley uh, that was here, uh, that was on the um, camshaft. And unfortunately, the second I pulled this belt off, the camshaft twisted. Who knows if this is even sitting on the teeth anymore down below. So we're probably going to have to take this off, find the right timing marks, uh, make sure that we got it good before we put it back on. But besides that, I mean, it's pretty, it looks okay. We don't have a blocked, uh, sorry, a cracked head because we've still got some water sitting even just in here um, from it. So it looks uh, it looks like we're going to be able to, to save it. No real surprises in there, so that's great. Um, but we did have some surprises on the head, so we're gonna go into the shop and take a look at that right now. Here's the head on the counter in the shop. Um, not easy to work on in that little engine bay. They've got so much stuff on here. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, I've pulled some heads off of other vehicles. This one was just a pain. You just couldn't get to stuff. Uh, I pulled it off in just one piece with the intake. Um, but let's get you in here. Come on a little closer here, and we're, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this thing and see what we're up against. Okay, so here's the, uh, the camshaft pulley that I marked. Here's the uh, paint marks there. I don't know if you can see. Uh, right there and right there. And if you remember, oh, there's another one right there. Um, if you remember on the pulley, one was right at the top of the belt. Um, not the pulley, but the belt. And when we took this, when we slid the pulley off, the second it went popped off, this whole crank shifted. Uh, camshaft, sorry, shifted. So it's definitely out of rotation. Um, but everything in here looks pretty good. Uh, no real surprises. It doesn't look ugly. Uh, any rust that you see is literally, um, it rubs off. Uh, it was from uh, me working on it in the rain. But um, for the most part, everything turned out okay. Okay, so back here we had a lot of hoses. Um, and a, just a lot. Vacuum lines, gas lines. Um, that's not a gas line. Uh, I don't even know where they, oh, these are the gas lines, um, right here, the bottom two. Um, anyways, it doesn't really matter, this is a coolant, this is probably another coolant, uh, or at least I think it's a coolant. No, I'm second guessing. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. My, uh, my, uh, my point is, is that there was just so many lines, another one goes here, plugs everywhere, it was just a real pain, and I gotta be honest with you, I had uh, one of my awesome employees help me out and uh, with the removal of it, because it was just getting to be just a pain in the butt, nothing too hard, but my shoulder was just really acting up and it was making it difficult. But um, for the most part, relatively clean. So what was the surprises? Well, uh, we're just gonna take a look at the bottom of the, uh, the head. Lift it up like that. So let me get you in here a little closer. Whoops, whoa, don't fall on me now. Let me get you in here a little closer here. So, we're looking at the uh, the the head and the valves here. Uh, it's okay on this side. Um, everything's okay. All the valves are closed right now because they're not under any tension. Um, you can see the spark plug sticking out here. Uh, I believe that's intake and exhaust. I can't remember off the top of my head anymore. Uh, you can already see it. I already gave it up. But this one looks okay. Um, this is just grass or string or something hanging down, part of my glove. Uh, but number three cylinder where we had no compression. Uh, one of these things is not like the other. So what I've done is I've ordered um, a valve. And I, I know earlier I said that uh, there was such a price difference between Rock Auto and uh, the local parts supplier. Um, for, for me, it's Lordco, the equivalent of like um, Pep Boys or O'Reilly's or something like that down in the States. Um, it's uh, anyways, they're, they're great to me, but I phoned one, got a super high price 
compared it to Rock Auto, I was going to do the Rock Auto uh, price, but then I phoned again because uh, now that I knew that I needed a valve, I was curious if they even had it because Rock Auto didn't. Uh, I also realized that I needed a water pump because the pulley is just super loose. Um, so once I phoned back and I needed all that stuff, miraculously, talked to a different guy, price for the head gasket went way down. Uh, almost to the rock auto pricing and the valve stem and the water pump were super cheap. So I think, I think I'm going to be uh, into all the parts for under 200 bucks um, for everything and it's local. So support local if you can. I totally get it guys when you're looking for the uh, cheaper parts. Uh, if you can save 50 to 100 bucks uh, on one part uh, but, and you can wait a day or two for shipping then yeah, I get it. Um, but honestly, you're also gonna regret when these parts stores, if they ever do start disappearing, you're gonna really regret it. So always make sure that you also support that local store, even if you are paying a little bit more, because uh, you just, you need it, when you need the part now, you're gonna have to go to them anyways, and you wanna get a good price. So that part is actually getting delivered to my house, just as good as Rock Auto. Uh, you can usually set something up with your parts store as well, so look into that, but um, we're going with that. Uh, we're gonna fix that. And we're going to pull the valve stem. That's what we're looking at right now. I'm just waiting on the part. So I think what we're going to do is take the camshaft off, get to that valve stem so that it's ready to just simply slide back in. And then we'll just assemble this back up together. I have never um, pulled a camshaft off of one of these motors. It does not look like rocket science. It looks like, uh, I don't know, three, uh, sorry, three sets of 10 mil uh, is going to hold the, the camshaft in. Okay, so I've just cracked all of the camshaft bolts loose. They are coming out nicely. Got a little bit of crud on some of them, so I'll just take that off. I gotta be honest, this uh, valve cover was one of the hardest ones that I've ever taken off. Um, the seal, I don't know if it's like a plastic washer, it's just a sear disintegrated in my hand here, but it, um, it was holding on the valve cover like grim death, so it didn't want to come off. But uh, we're about to see if this will come off. There we go. Okay, so I can see the timing, how it fits in here. It only, it only, it can only go one of two ways. Yeah, one of two ways with the teeth here. So we got to be careful about that, not to spin it. And we're gonna set this right here. Hopefully that's not gonna fall. Um, this is where we're at. I've pulled out the lifter. These are where the um, cam bearings were. Uh, it looks like there's like a, a seat of some kind so that it sits a little better. It just came out with the one. Um, I think it doesn't really matter, but as you can see, uh, super clean. No damages inside, so the engine, for the most part, the engine seems to be in really good shape. Um, what I'm running into an issue with here is just this uh, this lifter and how, um, actually it's a, it's a valve stem spring, and how is it that we take that out? Um, I have no idea. So I'm gonna have to get in there, uh, soak up some of the stuff. There's gonna be a C-clip of some kind, I'm guessing, and we'll get that off. The valve stem will come out the bottom, new one will go in, and, and that's what we'll do. <coughs> Let me, let me kneel down here for a second. Um, I was looking at this, staring at this. I was about to pull my phone out and uh, try and figure out how to take out these uh, little keeper things. Um, obviously, you can see here, I've removed uh, one, actually I've removed the um, valve stem. Valve, yeah. And uh, anyways, before I removed it, I was wondering how the heck I'm gonna get it out. I've never done one of these before. Mike. My employee, awesome guy, uh, great friend. He came up and he's like, oh, you just hit it with a hammer. And I was like, pardon? He said, yeah, you just grab it, take a, take like a deep socket, put it over top, obviously not, not on this. You would put it over top of the, uh, <laughs> right there. Whack it with a hammer, a, a hammer, sorry. And bam, it just comes right out. Uh, and he was right, so it came out, so now, we're trying to figure out how to get it back in. Uh, that I went to good old YouTube um, to see a couple videos there. I've got a couple ideas. What I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna spray this down, clean it up, 
And uh, if this goes in nice and smoothly, not the bad one, but if the good one goes in nice and smoothly, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys just how to take the take it out again uh, on camera, just so that you guys can learn. And uh, it's a good good trip trip trick to use. And how I'm going to be installing it could be a good trick to use as well. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, I hope the camera doesn't fall. Um, this is where we're working right now. This is all good old YouTube. Uh, hopefully this will this will work. So I gotta get the valve stem back in, as you can see. Uh, whoops, right about there. You can see the bad one and the good one. So we're gonna put this one in. So we're just gonna tip this up. I've got a bunch of my important parts right here. I'm not working on the cleanest of environments, but let's get this tipped up. Let's get this put in. There we go. And I'm gonna put a socket underneath it so that when I push on it, it doesn't go down uh, along with the uh, the rest of uh, everything when I'm, when I'm gonna plunge this. So if you can put these on like this, yes you can. So I got the one in there, the other one goes on this side. That's the hard part is just getting them to go in. Come on, there we go. So they're both sitting there. Spring is off center. Hopefully when I drop this, it doesn't bang them out. Nope, oh, they're good. Okay, so it's fairly lined up. Okay, and then what I read on the internet was, you grab a, uh, a socket and you put a bolt in it that'll slide in. See that? I can still put an extension on there to push down. And what you do is you get this extension on it. Now I don't know if I'm gonna be strong enough to do this, but you just set this, whoops, don't mess this up now. Set this right there, it's lined up. I have a feeling this is not gonna work, but we're gonna find out. And then you push it down. Oh, I almost got it first try, look at that. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I got the one in perfectly. The other one's about to fly out, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna try and center this. Get this on again. There you go, that's it. So that's not bad. I'll get you in here nice and close. You can take a peek. Stop looking there. There you go. As you can see, it's in there. It's good. I'm gonna do another video on this. Okay, so that little trick was pretty cool. We put the lifter back in here. We're good to go. Uh, we're gonna get the camshaft back on. Uh, I'm gonna have to Google and take a look at what to torque this to. But this is gonna go on. It only goes on one way. Don't be spinning on me now. There we go. Okay, it's good. These all had arrows on them. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, right there, there's an arrow. It's also labeled as number one, so uh, I believe that this one goes over here. Tried it over there, didn't work. This one's gonna go over here. Definitely not keeping everything in the cleanest condition. Put that guy over there. Oh, wrong way, and there we go. Perfect, seated down pretty good there. Got these guys over here. So, all the arrows are going the right way. We got number one, number two, number three. Uh, these are all 10 mil bolts. So we're gonna get this on. Once this is on, then we're probably gonna flip this over and start scraping the, uh, the head gasket off and have this ready to be going back in the car. in that day uh, three. We'll say it's day three. Uh, not full days though, so simmer down now. It's it's not been that hard of work. Uh, we've just been plugging away at this here and there. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna be uh, taking the water pump gasket off. I know I've brought an exacto knife here. We're just gonna scrape off the old gasket. We've already taken off the old water pump 
and it was toast. The pulley rattling like crazy. I think you guys even heard it probably. Something sounded like it was majorly wrong. Uh, I could already tell that it was the uh, water pump gasket. So we're just gonna get this out of here. Uh, it's off. It's off the trailer, guys. This this is probably how I should have started with it. Uh, didn't. The guys needed the trailer. So that's what motivated uh, the car to come off. I don't know why I like working on the vehicles on the trailer, but uh, I guess uh, I prefer it that way. Maybe because if it's not worth saving, it can just get right onto the scrapyard. But let's uh, let's get this uh, cleaned up, ready for a new water pump gasket. And uh, some of you guys might have caught it. This is not. It is not an '89. It is a '98. I got a little dyslexia flipped around there with the year. It's a 98 Geo Metro. Um, I've been saying it's an 89 a couple times now, but it doesn't really matter. You guys, you guys got the gist of what this was and uh, what we're working on here. So my question is gonna be, with all this messing around, are we gonna be on the home stretch here? Once we get this water pump on, the head's already cleaned up, we got the head gasket ready to be put on. Are we gonna have this thing running? And is it gonna have any other issues? Um, so far, track record's pretty good. This isn't really a will it run, because we knew it ran. It just, we were told it didn't run good. The uh, issue, that the seller was saying is not what the issue was, or at least it doesn't seem like it's what the issue was. So we're gonna have to get some brake clean in here eventually and clean up all this uh, all this crap. But I think this is uh, this is pretty good for the cover, or or not cover, but where the water pump goes. So let's get this thing on. What I did was I actually used. The cylinder <laughs> uh, to put all the nuts and bolts for, for the water pump. Probably not the right thing to do. You probably want to keep debris out of there, but that's okay. Oh, more instructions. Caution! Special assembly required. Leave that there. All right, let's get this uh, somewhat out of the way. We're gonna need some nuts and bolts. We will need that eventually. Let's take a couple of these just so that we can get it started. This is only going to go on, I think, one way. It's going to go on that way. Oh, I got a stud here, so we already got we got two studs here. Perfect. I like that. Always great when we got studs to line up. This is only going to go one way now. What I did, I did confirm that this is the correct water pump already. I don't know how this bolts on, I'm not going to lie. That doesn't seem right. There we go. Let's going to turn it down a bit. There we go. Now she's lining up. So it is the correct water pump, so that's good. We're going to just get this thing started here, bolted on. Once this is bolted on, then uh, we're going to have to figure out how to line up the police to put the head on and the camshaft to make sure that it's all lined up. It should be pretty simple. There's usually dots on the pulleys that you just line up. But uh, once all this is done, there's a chance, I don't think it's gonna happen tonight, but there's a chance that we could get this thing fired up and running. But first things first, let's get this uh, water pump back on. Look at that, there it is. Yep, pumps in. Uh, don't remember how this guy is set up. It's just kind of slides back and forth, so that is gonna help keep the uh, belt tight, the timing belt. Uh, right now is probably the best time to change the timing belt, but don't have it. Um, maybe I'll call it in. We'll see. See how I feel. To do the timing on this, though, there is a uh, keyway. Not really a keyway. More like a pin. Is my hand even in the way? Right there. I'm gonna move my hand right there. Uh, there's a key there, and that lines up with this sprocket, if you will. And what you want to do is you want to line it up to this. It's a little off right now, but you want to line it up pointing to the the arrow there. Actually, I think it's I think it's this one. 
right there, not this one. I don't know if you can even see what I'm pointing at here. But there's a, there's a little arrow here. So that's what you gotta point it to. Don't know if I can just turn this by hand right now. There we go, a little bit, perfect. Yeah, so there is a keyway there. Uh, I'm gonna have to look back on the internet if it's just this that you have to line up or the top of this that you have to line up with that. But um, we're close to getting the head back on. So I'd like to take the time right now to tell you guys just how we got to this uh, spot. Uh, when I was taking this off, it was in the rain. Um, these head studs are 12 point uh, 10 mils. I didn't have a 12 point. So what we did was we made one. That is a closed side of a wrench that we just cut off and welded to an extra deep socket that we had laying around. And that's what we're using, uh, used to remove those. And that's what we're gonna be using to put them back in. Um, originally we uh, took this off. Um, we're trying to take the intake off. That's what I was trying to do. I thought that was the better way. I'm actually gonna assemble this while it's out of the car um, because it's gonna be a lot easier to do. And then a lot of these hoses and everything like that were um, kind of fighting you as you were removing it. It just wasn't the easiest to get to, but now knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have bothered trying to take over, take apart the intake. I just would have left it uh, all there. But uh, water pump does not have to come off. Uh, head studs go in all these. Whoops, I got the new gasket here. I'll just set this aside. Head studs just go where all these uh, bolts go. So it takes eight and uh, the water pump does not have to come off, but you do have to take off the front uh, cover in order to get to, well, you need to get the, the belt off of the uh, camshaft that would be sitting right around here. Anyways, um, so if the water pump didn't have to be done, which it did, cause it's super, I don't know if you're gonna be able to even hear it. It's super loose. I kind of need both hands in order, there you go. You can probably see it, but super loose. Um, water pump doesn't have to be done, uh, but I think if you were in this far, probably better just to do it. Um, but for the most part, you just need 10 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter uh, wrenches and everything. Um, and we're just gonna go in reverse order and try and get this stabbed back in. Well, I think putting this in is not gonna be as hard as it kind of looked. We're gonna try and hold the gasket. I couldn't find my, my gasket tape. I'm going to try and hold it in place here. Uh, how am I going to flip this up? I'm going to flip it up this way. Again, if it looks like I'm making things more difficult than it is, it's, it's just I'm just fighting a, an injury uh, that I might have to go in for surgery for, of all things, to be honest with you. But. Okay, so if that stays like that, again, gasket tape's the way to go. If that stays like this, we should be able to just plunk this on. Just like so. I don't want to cut my fingers. I think that's. got a bunch of those hoses here it honestly I don't know why it fought me as hard as it did it just felt like I was fighting me pretty good when I was removing it um, but it doesn't look too bad it looks like we should be able to have this all attached pretty quick here let's see even if I can get some of this just going on right now so we've got where's the gas lines the gas lines are going to be tight ones they're going to be down here I think That guy goes. That's cool. Oh, it goes up there. Okay. So, we got the fuel lines right down under here. Kind of tight. So, we're going to go right on there. And the problem is, is just getting the clamps on them, to be honest with you. But I'm just going to get them to where they're going. And then we'll worry about getting the clamps on them afterwards. I might have to re pull them. I just want to make sure that I 
kind of remember where the heck these things are going. This assembly over here that's gonna end up bolting to this, and it's gonna have some backing lines going to it. So I think I think we're good. I got that one to go somewhere. I got this one to go somewhere, and I got this guy that goes back here. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get those clamped on. We're gonna get this uh, button down, and then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing for trying to line all this up with uh, the timing marks and everything. Well, I've been fighting the return line for the fuel line quite a bit. Um, what I'm doing right now is uh, getting rid of the stock clamp because it's just not compressing anymore. Uh, I'm gonna put a new clamp on. I'm not gonna get it snug, I'm just gonna get it a little closer than it is because it is quite tight down there. And again, the hose isn't sliding on, so just for a little tip for you guys, it's nothing crazy, uh, but just throw a little lubricant on Whatever the heck you're trying to slide the, um, the hose over, so I can get down there. Sure. Got a hole. Back side of the engine's looped. But that should help with getting the, the line, especially when you're working in tight quarters. Uh, there we go. There we go. It should help with getting it on nice and easy, and uh, and then you can come follow it with a, a clamp and clamp her down nice and tight. But just these little things. It's nothing. It's not rocket science, but sometimes you can sit there for 15 minutes struggling with something, and if you just walked the five, well, 30 seconds to your parts bench or whatever, got some lubricant, sprayed it on, you'd be done rather than trying to struggle with it. So, just give you something to think about. Hey there. Don't mind me. I'm just putting on the uh, crank pulley through the fender. Not really, but under the fender. Awkward position. I'm using this breaker bar here to just rotate the engine over. Because I can only put in one bolt at a time, and I think there's about half a dozen of them. You know, I really thought before starting this engine, sorry, before taking the head off, but I thought with it being such a small motor and a small little car that it wasn't going to be too bad and it was going to be kind of accessible but I was wrong this kind of reminds me I don't know if any of you guys have had a, am I even in the shot? I don't know maybe you just hear my voice if any of you guys have ever had a freaking Ford Tempo their water pump There's, I can hear people typing already. Those water pumps are not fun to tackle. This isn't bad. This is actually easy in comparison. But the Ford Tempos, their water pumps, they suck. I think this is the last one. Come on. Don't fight me now. So I found out that the passenger door doesn't open. I may have even talked about it earlier in the video. I don't know. This video has been dragged on a couple days because I've been caught up catching up with work here and there. Getting some stuff done. Honestly, this probably could have been done in a day. Oh, my arm. Holding it in one position is just difficult. Just very fatigued. But yeah, this job wasn't too, too uh, difficult. Uh, some bolts and some cables, wires, all that stuff was a little hard to get to, but we're almost at the point where we're gonna be firing this thing up. I still have to put the uh, exhaust manifold gasket on. Uh, the valve cover is not on, but I'm probably just gonna leave like that for the first trial to see if it starts. I've got the lines all, uh, sorry, the timing all set, hopefully, fingers crossed, that it'll work. But let me just finish putting this up and I'll pull you guys a little closer. We are there. So, what we're gonna do is we are not completely done. We don't have the cover on. We don't have the water pulley pump on. That's why we have some uh, leftover bolts and a, uh, sorry, the pump is on, water pulley 
is right there. Anyways, leftover uh, leftover parts, nuts and bolts. We're on track to have them all used up by the time we're done. But it is on. It is now time to start this car. We still don't have any coolant in this. Uh, but we're going to see if that mist went away. Let's just make sure that these are seated in good. Yes. Oh, that one was not. That's good. Got the coil wire on. I'm going to put the battery. There we go. Yeah, click away. There you go. Okay, battery is on. So, if you remember correctly, or remember back when we tried this the first time, this thing shook violently. It fired right up, but holy, she's shaking. Let's see if she'll start. Let's see if we got the timing proper. And let's see if uh, it's gonna shake. This thing was shaking like crazy. Here we go. Look at that. She's fixed. That's it, I'm only gonna do that for right now. Let's get the coolant in it. Once we get the coolant in it, we'll do a spark plug test while we're, while it's running just to show you guys, but I think we are on the home stretch. We are nearing the end. So, bit of gamble on this car to see if it was worth fixing. Threw some parts at it. We could have ended up still with a bad cylinder, but uh, everything's worked out pretty good. So we're just gonna fill it up with some uh, coolant. Hopefully, there isn't a crack in the block somewhere or something. You hear my phone going off like crazy. Uh, sorry about that. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're not gonna notice any real leaking coming down here. Uh, this is concentrated uh, antifreeze, so I'm gonna have to add this. It's really not going to take a lot, to be honest with you. I'm going to have to add this and then uh, add some water to it, probably. Oh, I hear leaking already. It's coming out the drain uh, of the radiator. So let's just tighten that up. Okay, that was an easy fix. Fixed. Okay, so let's add some more. Listen again for some leaking. Hopefully we don't run into any issues. Oh, yep, we do. That's because there's a rad hose that's not connected. So let's just do that up. Great. A couple things that we forgot about. Where are the pliers? I had them here. They're right there. Okay, got them. Let's get the pliers, hook them on here. We got a little bit of a mass. Nothing too crazy. Come on, hose. Get that going there. There we go. Okay, so that's on. Go back to filling it up. What else did I forget? So that means we filled up the top of the radiator and it was coming into the engine. So both those leaks were, one was my fault, the other one was from the previous owner when they drained the radiator, I guess. But neither of them were anything major. Come on. Fill up soon. Come on. there. Probably switch to water and save some of this for another project, but whatever. It's not that expensive. Come on. There we go. She's pretty much full. There's no overflow reservoir, I don't think. I'll have to check under the sweater here. Yeah, there's no... Oh, there we go. She's full. It just goes down there. So we're going to put the cap back on that I probably just tossed on the ground. Um, look at this though, guys. There's the cap. Put it back on. We're going to fire this up, but look at this. Pretty impressive. I just got some leftover garbage washers here that uh, were for the valve cover, but in all honesty, I didn't even, even end up with any missing nuts and bolts. So professional. Phone's going off like crazy. Yep. We'll just ignore that. 
There we go. Started up with some coolant. We're gonna let it idle now. And then we're going to maybe take it for a quick little burn, maybe clean it, I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do, but this is a win, that's good, we just saved a car from the crusher, and someone can use this as a daily driver. I've left it running here for, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes, um, got a little bit of a shake to it now, but you know what, we're going to take it for a quick drive, see how she handles, uh, I guess let's just go take it for a drive. So we got her up to operating temperature, half a tank of gas, we're just going to go for a quick drive, see how she handles. The shifter is very stiff and with it being standard it's going to be, going to be a little interesting to see if I can shift and hold the camera here, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Standard. Let's get her in a second. It's shifting. Brakes. Yeah, we got we got brakes. You can tell they're old. Little little grinding, but nothing uh, nothing too too bad. But she's a little peppy. <laughs> These small cars, they're pretty gutless in all honesty, but the it's a little peppy. It's not bad. Good for someone for a first vehicle. So far, so far so good. bottom where I can shift through some of these gears. All right. It's running smooth. It's not missing. I like this. All right, get in there. Yeah, I went to, <laughs> I went to fifth on that one. Kind of hard. It's really stiff, this shifter. Um, I think it's going to need to get some lubrication. Something's either binding or it's just really uh, corroded and stiff, but so far it's Okay, coming to a stop here. Where this guy's going. Alright, let's go this way. Take through the gears. Second. Let's try not to skip through. That went into fifth again. <laughs> All the gears seem to be working. This is good. I don't know if reverse works. We're gonna find out right here though. Brakes seem to be pretty good. We got reverse. So what does this car need? A bath. She needs a bath. The passenger door does not want to open. third. There we go. Come on, fourth. Yeah. And fifth. Perfect. She goes through all the gears. This is a success for sure. Uh, it's running really smooth. It's not missing. Speedometer works. Heat is still at half. Hasn't raised any. Catching up to, uh, catching up to that guy that turned in front of me just a second ago, so we'll see where he's going. There's third. Oh, that's not third. That's third. That's fifth. Second. Second. Let's see what this guy's doing. Let's see if he'll let me pass him or if he's going to stop on a hill. It's nice living where we live because people, uh, <laughs> when they're not from the area, you can tell. They don't know usually stop. You can just tell that they're not from the area. Well guys, it's not the, this wasn't the will it run, but uh, another success. Definitely 
uh, took some of the most, uh, what's the word? Some of the most diving into an engine to get it to run properly anyways. Here we go. Yeah, let's just stop in the middle of the road. Put your hazards on, that's cool. Anyways, um, definitely took some more repairing on this one. Even though we started with a running vehicle, it definitely was not uh, running very well. But now it is. We definitely got some new life in another vehicle that was a free vehicle and it was destined for the scrapyard of all things. I only got it because uh, while well, the person that, uh, it was kind of a friend of a friend uh, how I got this car, but it's definitely a great little starter car for someone. Let's just hop out and do a little walk around, one last walk around. All right, so it'll clean up really nicely guys. This has been a success. Uh, so there you go. A little what was it 98 geo metro learn how to do the valve stem on it head gasket all that fun stuff might not have been done properly but she's running like a champ now she's just burning off the rest of the oil uh, from doing the engine uh, dripping dripping some engine oil on the uh, on the block you can see the steam uh, or oil coming out of it but it's not it's not overheating it's not hot it's definitely uh, a good vehicle and ready for the next person I really want to thank you for watching this episode of Bucket of Cars. Don't forget to like, subscribe, watch my next video. I don't know, it's going to be over here, over here, maybe down here, somewhere. But watch it, give a thumbs up, give a like, make a comment, and uh, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Take care.